recognize the challenges in Subi and made you a minister for works and housing. Now the ball will be in your court. Yeah? You tell us how you're going to uh, rebuild Subi such that it will be functional, more functional for its commercial purposes, commercial administrative purposes. So first start by telling us your, about yourself briefly and then we'll ask questions on CV if any. Then you finally tell us how you re rearrange to be. <laughs> Most grateful, Mr. Chairman. I'm Eugene Boachie Entry, born on the 7th of May 1970, to the late Justice George Goku Entry and Ms. Stella Sewa Beria in Kumase, in Asafu Kumase. I'm a Christian by religion. I'm, I'm a Christian. I started my prep school at Penworth International in Kumase, Asukwa. Then to Amankwe Tia Experimental Primary, Gold Fridge Preparatory School in Takwa, Sepsis Primary School in Takurade, Royal International School in Asukwa Kumasi for my common entrance, entered the Pokowari School, sat for my GC honorary level at Technology Secondary School, did one year sixth form, then left for the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom in 1991, I worked with the Royal Overseas League in Green Park in London, then Asda Stores in Roehampton. I then started studying in 1994, according to my CV, and I started reading law at Lambert College. There is to Westminster College, Battersea Park Road, London, for my diploma in business studies. I then entered the University of Westminster, Harrow Business School, Harrow Middlesex, for my Bachelor of Honours business administration degree. Came back to Ghana. Well, after leaving university, I worked with Lloyd's TSB PLC and City Barclays Bank PLC, and then with the Department for Constitutional Affairs in London. Came to Ghana, set up my own company, known as UGAS Limited, and I was a managing director. Worked there till I became I till I was elected a parliamentary candidate on the ticket of the new patriotic party in the year 2015. I think that's all I've got to say about myself. And parliament, which committees do you serve on? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On Parliament, I'm on three committees, namely the Education Committee, that's a select committee, and Standing Orders and House. Standing Orders and House. Three. 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 Education, Standing Orders and House. Okay. They're all there. They're there. Membership for Parliamentary Committees. It is shorting them, so they appear like one sentence, even though he's talking about three committees. Now, the conferences you've undertaken or you've participated in are all um, um, political conference, Conservative Party conference in Blackpool, Conservative Party conference in Bournemouth, and then orientation and action seminar for members of the seventh parliament. Which other one is? for purposes other than politics, if any. Mr. Chairman, that's all I've done with my life since 2005, politics. A follow-up follow on that one. Um, with the conferences and programs attended, you don't state the countries, um, the cities or the... Um, Areas are there, but the country is not there. Do we, do we have your permission? The first one, which country was that? Orientation and induction seminar. Local? Accra. It's Accra, Ghana. Accra, Ghana. And the next one? Where? Foridia, Ghana. And then the next one? The next one is London, City of London. London, UK. And the Conservative Party conferences, the two conferences are all in London. In London. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, they are in UK, United Kingdom. United Kingdom. And to Blackpool besides, and Bournemouth. Yes, I forgot I was, I was talking to a lawyer, sorry. And then on your CV, um, you indicate on the first page, biodata, 
that you're a Christian, but you haven't told us your denomination. Your church people will be happy to hear you. Catholic. Yeah, I'm Catholic. Catholic Presbyterian. <laughs> Uh, Catholic and partly Presbyterian. We are brought up between two strong families. My, my maternal side is strongly Presbyterian and my paternal side is Catholic. So, uh, so where do you worship? I'm a Catholic. All right. Do you know that there's a Catholic uh, church here? Have you been there before? <laughs> Your mic. Said no. Let us let your Catholic faith show. Every Wednesday, we worship there. At the Saint Peter, the seat of Saint Peter Church, right here. Your friend there comes every morning. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Advice taking. On the second page of your CV, um, between 1994 to 1995, access to law. Uh, what happened to the law? Because subsequently, there's a diploma in business studies and then a BA in business administration. So, what happened to your access to law program? Mr. Chairman, I'm a son of a lawyer. I wanted to follow his footsteps. But I was advised against it by my Greek Cypriot lecturer at, in, in, at Lambert College to pursue business instead because of the, condition in the conditions in the country, in the United Kingdom. He was basically talking about my accent at the time. Such a, ba a bad advice. If you, had, if, you had, if you had studied law, your options here in Ghana are wide and open, and nobody can hold you back. Anytime the, the, the seniors told us uh, the bar is like a mother, he can go anywhere and come back home to the bar. So think about it. <laughs> very true, very true, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Do you? Yes. Do you have any company locally that is not listed on the CV? Well, yes. Like I stated, I was the uh, managing director of Ugas Limited, but I've relinquished my directorship and shareholding since becoming a member of Parliament. So I no longer play any major role in the in the in the decision That's making of the company. So you gas limited, what do you do? What does the company we, well, do? Well uh, we used to do small scale construction, uh, mainly in the Kumasi metropolis. And I've since severed my, 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 my ties with the company since becoming a member of parliament. Have you taken steps to get the necessary clearance from Right, Honorable Speaker, to still do such business, since you are entitled to do so, if you seek the necessary clearance. Have you taken steps, yeah, because, or you intend to? Well, the lawyers will advise me here. Because I think because I've relinquished my directorship and shareholding, I think I have nothing to do with the company. I don't know whether I have to proceed to the Speaker to seek formal um, approval of the decision. You said you are no more the managing director. I've severed all links with But them. you can be a member of, of the company. You are no more a member. You don't I've hold shares. I've everything, shareholding everything. You can survive on your salary. Okay, I've, yes, survived, I've, survived, I've survived. Because you're entitled to once you see clearance. So I just wanted that clarification. Thank I you. didn't want any conflict of interest. So I just decided to just let you go. Rightly so. Thank you. Very well. You've stayed in the United Kingdom for a while. Did you ever obtain the citizenship of the United Kingdom or any other country? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Between 1997 to the year 2014, I held full British citizenship. Upon my election as a parliamentary candidate for the constituency, I already set in train the process of renouncing my citizenship. The Home Office in April of last year gave me a certificate of renunciation. So as we speak, I'm a full Ghanaian, full-blooded Ghanaian. Uh, as for full-blooded, you always were. You just, <laughs> you just, you just chose to <laughs> obtain. Um, you'll be required to lodge a copy of your certificate, yeah, sure. evidencing with, with a clerk, so that a record reflects that sure. you have relinquished the. Um, citizenship of another country, right? 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and you will start. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, Honorable Deputy Minister nominee. Works and housing. We are entering rainy seasons. Our capital cities, especially Accra. And now we have these Galamse pits all over Ghana. And they become silent killers. What are you going to help your minister to address these issues? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the rains are upon us and flooding, perennial flooding, in, especially in our capital city, is a concern for all of us. I think reading the MPP manifesto, uh, it was stated that there will be a national hydrology authority who is not yet in place. They are the ones in charge of um, storm drainage and um, sea defense wars and stuff like that. So when my, when my minister appeared before this committee, I think he made it clear that steps are being taken with that department in, in terms of engineering, um, the, re, uh, the re-engineering of the drains within the capital city to allow free flow of water when it rains. So um, steps have been taken in that direction. But my briefing from the ministry when I met the director was that uh, they've been un underfunded and um, because they don't have the agency or authority status, it's difficult for them to, to have a legal backing to prevent entities like urban roads and feeder roads in terms of constructing drains. So that's a challenge for them. But he also made me aware, the director also made me aware that a, um, a formal a document has been sent to the Attorney General's department, which will be ratified soon for them to have in quotes, monopoly in terms of our drainage systems in our country. Thank you. You are a minister and a parliamentarian. Honorable, uh, hold on. Oh, okay. Can you get, deliver your certificate to the clerk's assistant so we don't forget it? All right. You are Deputy Minister nominee an MP. Your minister is an MP. Your other deputy minister is an MP. How are you going to switch in between your responsibility to make sure that Ghana gets the best service out of you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the three of us, eventually, if the two of us are approved by this August committee, we will become ministers. But we are first and foremost parliamentarians. We are representative of the people. And secondly, we've been appointed or nominated by the president to serve as deputy ministers. So I think the combination of those two roles, I mean, is very clear to, I mean, to me. That, uh, I mean, I have a job to do by representing the good people of Subin, as well as, you know, serving the president in my capacity as a deputy minister if I'm, if I'm approved. So I don't think I don't think there's, there are any grey areas when 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 the matter is up for discussion. Thank you. Per your briefing at the ministry, what is the mission statement of the ministry, and how are you going to help your minister to achieve that? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes. The the ministry exists to formulate and implement the programs, plans, and policies for the, for, the, for the provision of affordable housing, management of public landed properties, drainage systems, and what have you. So that's the, that is the, that's the core mandate of the ministry. Then in terms of the vision, the vision is to make sure that low to middle income earners in our country are able to live in secure, decent, affordable accommodation. Added to that is also the maintenance of all private, uh, all public properties. And um, that, that so far, that so far as I'm concerned, the goal of the, of the ministry and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the vision of the, of, of the ministry. 
Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Honorable Jato. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, uh, Honorable Nominee. The drains and the sewer system falls under the ministry, your ministry. But the sanitation component falls under water resource and sanitation. How do you explain this? Uh, in, in, ter in terms of uh, in terms of in terms of I want to be clear. You said how does the nominee explain why drains are in the works and housing and sanitation is uh, I'm building Ah, uh, okay. What I'm saying is this. The, the drains and then the sewage system falls under, in terms of its construction and everything, and maintenance falls under uh, your ministry. Then the sanitation component falls under, your ministry. Falls under the ministry. Um, um, the ministry of water resource and, uh, and sanitation. What I'm saying is that, do you consider some interministerial collaboration in making sure that this system works very well? Well, Mr. Chairman, because the sanitation ministry has been just been carved out, or water has been carved out of the existing ministry, I think there will be an interministerial collaboration at that level. And I think we are, I'm going to support my sector minister with any kind of recommendations that I may have in that direction. Yes, I know we get to. Uh, with affordable housing, what is the state of the affordable housing and how do you intend to complete it so we can use it? Mr. Chairman, it's a very worrisome phenomenon, I must admit. I think my minister appeared before this committee and informed the committee about the cost overruns that tend to burden government. Once, once ruling governments are exiting. Affordable housing started by the Estuar Kofu administration. Was left abandoned. Portions of it were sold to SNET TDC, the security agencies, and what have you for completion. That is the state where we are. But when my minister appeared before this committee, if my memory serves me right, he made it clear that as a policy, we have to complete all affordable housing that the government has backed upon before starting fresh ones or new ones. So that's the state of um, the affordable housing. Um, project. Secondly, secondly, um, then the two-bedroom facility, which was selling for 24000 under President Kofo, is now selling for 220000 Ghana cities. So the question now is, is it really affordable? That's the question before all of us as parliamentarians, as Ghanaians. That the definition affordable? of affordable depends on your pocket size. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. And I think, I think that's the, that, 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 that the state that we, are, we find ourselves in, unfortunately. But um, with the, the, the projects are ongoing. I mean, scoring man point, I know the contractors have, have mobilized to site. Uh, Boteman is 90% done. Uh, apart from Kofod, we are Y and Tamale, which are still outstanding. I think the rest are all almost near in completion. Thank you very much. We have a lot of government bungalows that private persons are using without paying. Yeah, to, you are allowed two questions. You are done. Sorry, let me move on. I'm, I'm almost ended. So let me know. Switch off your mic, please. I recognize there will be a more before I go anywhere else. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congress, Eugene. Um, Eugene, you have six children. Are they all your children? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, they are all my children. Wait, wait. How old is the last one? Honorable, honorable Obiama, this is a personal question. It's on the TV. questions relating to it. It's on <laughs> Yes, but the, the, it's enough that you know they are six. <laughs> Otherwise, you ask us to name the mothers and no, no, no. little <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Eugene, you, you said you've had briefing from the Chief Director of the Ministry. Did you have any briefing on the Accra storm drainage and sewage system? That is the Conti project. What do you know about the Conti project? Thank, thank you, Mr. That's Chairman. All I can say is that ah, the Conti much. project suffered difficulty in obtaining credit from a U.S. Exim Bank and Standard Chartered Bank. But the project is under executive review. So as we speak, I think the lawyers who say, is it subjudice or subjudice? I can't, I can't, I... Please, you had the option to do the law, you didn't, so don't stop, stop. <laughs> um, uh, foreign interiors where uh, your vocabulary is limited. Uh, it is not before a judge or before a court. It's not subject to the Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, so it's, it's an executive review, so I'm, I'm afraid I can't comment. Well, unfortunately, as the Chairman said, the fact that the Ministry is reviewing it, or even the Presidency, doesn't mean that you cannot talk about the county project. It's, I just wanted to know what you know about the project not the review. What have you been briefed about the project as a county project? Like I said, it's, um, it was a massive project to deal with, the, with, with, with flooding, or perennial flooding in the capital city, but it suffered difficulty in obtaining credit. So as, as, as we speak, it stalled. The, well, what happened was that Parliament approved $663 million for the storm drainage system. And as we speak, we are not aware that any money has come in. But we are aware that there were local contractors who were asked to pursue part of the project. Are you aware of that? I'm not, Mr. Speaker, I'm not, Mr. Chairman, I'm not exactly aware of the point raised by Honorable Obi Amwa. But I'm aware that the, pro the, the, the project has stalled due to lack of finance from the U.S. Exim Bank and Standard Chartered. Very well. Let's move on. Um, with your background, what would you say is the major constraint as far as the mortgage market in Ghana is concerned? And how do we address, how do we address that? Mr. Chairman, the mortgage industry is a, is a regulated industry in the in other jurisdictions. I don't know, I, I'm not so conversant with the Ghanaian mortgage industry. But the only way that any serious government like ours would, would deal with afford, the, the lack of housing in our country is to encourage, uh, expand the frontiers of the, of, the, of, the, of the mortgage industry by encouraging uh, more, uh, streams of multiple mortgage uh, uh, mortgage finance um, um, entities. At the moment, at the moment, I know HFC and like my colleague was alluding to yesterday, my colleague Fida, Honorable Fida Prempe, HFC and Ghana Home Loans are the, are, are, are the major players in the market now. But we need to encourage more banks to make monies available to the first-time buyers, or also create more fiscal space for the government as well. In Kumasi, hmm, even if the flats that they are selling for here, one million cities, if they sold it for even 100,000 Ghana cities, people won't buy it because they know the cost of brick and sand and mortar, and they know how to put them together. That's what 
business is not doing well in the Shanta region. People understand the construction industry. The real challenge, in my view, is what financing. At Agra, even you, you can't afford a flat. Not nobody here, unless you're doing powder business. <laughs> you can't afford a flat in Accra. So uh, the, program, the, the projects, who are they, who, who are they, which, which market are they targeting? So if you're talking to us, talk to us about our market level, what you can genuinely pay through your, your income. Most grateful, Mr. Chairman. I think the Chairman is right. Two, one is land acquisition, and two is invest, investors' returns on their capital. I didn't write them about. So that's why I think the mortgage industry is struggling. But of course, we can always go back to a drawing board and try and restructure it and, you know, get more first time buyers to get on the, on, 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 on the ladder to, you know, bring more money into the system. Well, in addition to this, would you agree that because sometimes the mortgage aspect is dollar indexed, we end up never owing the property. And even though in law is once a mortgage, always a mortgage, under home finance law, they are allowed to repossess the property if you're not able to um, pay off the mortgage. So would you also agree that because it's dollar indexed, it, it prevents uh, the average person for, from owning the property or fully paying off the property? Mr. Chairman, I think Honorable answer, has answered this question. Because it's dollar indexed, it prevents many people from entering the market. And I don't know whether we can legislate to prevent people from transacting business in U.S. dollars when you have a national currency. I mean, you, you are the lawyers, all the lawyers, there, eh? But even the government buys things in dollar rates, so it's because of the instability of our. But the real issue is what he said that I'm not a, a mortgage protection act now. The mortgage protection, yeah. Your amount. What you owe is only a charge of the property. So uh, they can always repossess it. And else, the, the common law principle was that once a mortgage, always, so once you started, you continue to pay, you don't have a problem. But the challenge is, anyway, um, I'll allow one more question and then I'll, uh, uh, the friends are interested in this discussion. So, what? No, uh, Mr. Come. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, congratulate, congratulations, Honorable Eugene Boache Entry, on your nomination. Um, I want to ask this question, um, which has to do with your 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 character <laughs> and your leadership skills. I have known you to be a very passionate, very active, and um, very brisk personality in your dealing. Fortunately, you are going to a ministry where your colleague deputy is a very calm woman, and your minister is an equally very humble, quiet, and calm person. <laughs> um, uh, um, Yes, so I want you to get the opportunity to tell the country that you, you, your, your temperament, your temperament and your conduct at the ministry will not lead to major crisis, but rather harmony and a good working relationship with your minister. What assurance can you give us? Mr. 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 Speaker, Mr. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> he's a speaker as well. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, there's the political side of you, Jimbo Achenchi, which I think you are alluding to, and there's also the professional side of me, which you probably haven't seen, because we haven't. Yes, 
So I think both, both have served me well to bring me this far, to be sitting in front of this August committee and being nominated and being vetted. So I think, yes, advice on the prisoners and what have you, but um, I, don't think, I don't think close colleagues have issue with me because they see the lighter side of me more than you know, me on TV trying to make a, a, put a point across or trying to make sure that I get my party elected into office and what have you. So that's a passion bit. But then, of course, I'm, like you said, I'm going to be working with a very calm, cool, collected honorable member for Tano North, honorable Fida Prempe and honorable Samuel Atachia, who's going to be the sector minister. I think so far, so good. We've had a very excellent relationship. And we can, we, 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 we can only build on it, you know, for the, for the sake of our party and Mother Ghana. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, my last question, my, Mr. Mr. Chairman, just one last question. I, I, I asked your colleague, Deputy Minister, when she appeared before this committee, what is your view about the Public Works Department, PWD? in the, uh, the current situation where we have a lot of public buildings being run down, even ministers' houses and designated houses, and a lot of government properties. But we have a defunct public works department. I mean, going to the ministry, what are you going to do to support your minister? And what are your views generally on the public works department and what must be done? Mr. Chairman, to be blunt with Mr. Honorable Cabo, the public works department, the state of it is not the best. I'm used to living in PWD properties at a very early age, and I know what they're capable of doing. I think at the moment, a chunk of the operations have been decentralized to the municipal, regional coordinating councils, district, district uh, assemblies and that has taken the shine of PWD. It's also underfunded. I think the last time a budgetary allocation was made to that submented department was in 2013, which is not the best. Uh, the, P, uh, the, 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 the all mandates of PWD emphasize, and the potential for it to grow it's also non-existent because the PWD could be an, a recruitment ground for many, many, many for, for many of our team and youth. Lack of money. Foreign affairs, the audio system at National International Conference Centre, uh, the National Theatre. And I think the flag staff has in Pedro as a lodge. So there's not much for them to do. And I think we, uh, when my minister appeared before this committee, he also made a case that portions or a substantial portion of the internally generated funds, must, they must be allowed to use it, you know, to, 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 to grow PWD. After 122 years of existence in our country, a colonial relic. Which has served, which has served us in the past, the last 30 years or so, you know, it used to be the best thing that's ever happened to this country. But at the moment, I don't even know where they are going. So I think, uh, apart from the job creation aspect, we are, we are, we are, I'm going to support the minister to make a strong case about, you know, restoring PWD to its former glory. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Nyama, is, is that right, Dr. Nyama? Okay. Uh, Mr. Eugene Boachui Entry, uh, you are my elder brother. I think we've been together uh, for a very long time from our days in the UK. So it's, this is going to be very friendly. Uh, I'm just looking at your CV and educational background. It seems you spent a year at Penworth International School, a year at Amanquetia Experimental primary, a year at service primary school, a year at Royal International School, a year at Opokuwari 
Yeah. Is it right to assume, am I right to assume that your father was a judge, so he was being post transferred around all the time, that's why you've been spending a no, no, no. year at those school? I assume so. Mr. Chairman, partly the reason, partly the reason, and the, 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 the last one he referred to was my asthmatic condition in a, in a boarding facility, where I had to be drawn by my late father. So he's right, partly my reason. My father was, was a magistrate and a judge and was being... So you are being transferred. And even in the UK. UK was... UK, you have to do an to enter university to read law. So the course was only for a year. All right. If I were him, I would assume that you were truant, but he chose to. <laughs> he chose to use that uh, anyway. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, he's a friend, so I won't assume that. Let me go on to the um, doctor. You are abusing your hospitality. <laughs> I gave you one opportunity. You came to uh, stole your friend and his truancy. It's okay. That's it. I'm done. Now I'm coming to leadership. Do you want to ask a question? All right, uh, Vice Chair. Very well. Honorable Budget Eugene, now tell me, I heard your lamentations this morning. I don't know what you wanted to share, the challenges that are doomed with us. Now we have heard you. The President has graciously made you the Minister, a Deputy Minister. The local government, um, sorry, Works and Housing Ministry, you have opportunity to rearrange what is happening uh, in the doom. Tell us what you would do differently to reduce the traffic and the congestion at the doom. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I think it's a very worrying trend. And I don't know if there's much that the government can do. I think it's largely to do with the Kumasi Metropolitan Authority. The human and vehicular traffic from Kama Health, who those who know Kumasi very well, the Kama Health Services building to the zoo. A walk that should have taken you five minutes is now taking about 15 minutes. And I think, it's a, it's, I think the KMA is in charge of it. Because most of the most of the traders or hawkers who were if I, who were asked to leave where the central market is being built now, I'm sure found spaces on the pavements on the streets. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering how these people are going to be asked to return. Because when uh, when all, all when all is said and done, after the completion of the shops, these people can't afford to rent or purchase one. So what are we going to do with them? And the, I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm quite sure about 85% of those people hawking on the streets and selling on the streets will be shopless. And it's a, I, I think it will become a national, or we are staring at a national security issue here, where, where if, if care is not taken, where if care is not taken, it will blow up in our faces. So... Um, in this serious consultation, serious collaboration between um, all the 10 MPs in Kumase, the KMA, the regional minister to an extent, the minister for um, national security. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chairman. To, to take a critical look, to take a critical look about how to, how to, um, how to, uh, relocate all these hawkers and traders on the streets of Kumase. I, I, I worry about it every, every, every now and then. But I think, I think that, that's the solution. We all have to put our heads together to find the best way forward to, to relocate them. I remember, without meaning to put you on the spot, it's your constituency. So maybe you find it difficult to tell his artistry. The Dwarkridge Road in front of Central Market 
and the railway shops. More than half of it has been taken over by traders, displaying plantain, yam, cassava on the streets. And we encourage the argument that they have nowhere to sell. Is it a good reason? Because you have nowhere to sell, you're blocking the road, the pavement. So should it be the case of worrying about where they will go or clearing the pavement and the roads for a vehicular and, 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 and for people to walk? Is it a case of we, should, we don't know where they should go? They came from somewhere. The first thing is that if they have excess, the market is overflown. KMA is totally capable of building new markets. But we should not encourage the situation where I have nowhere to go, so I put my, my, my planting on the road and I'm selling it. I, I've taken the pavement and I'm selling used clothes there. You go and walk somewhere or I mean, I'm challenging you now to go and make sure that I don't remember the last time I drove around any of those places. I always use the back roads because it's impracticable. So what is the whole essence of And those things cost us a lot of money. We didn't build it for, for selling yams and plantains and things. So this is one I'm, I'm challenging you to work with your KMA. KMA should apply the rules of the city and clear their place for vehicles to move and human beings to, to walk on the pavement. Anyway, uh, on this note, uh, discharged. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I think you know the constituency better than I do. And on this note, I, I take your advice. <laughs> we will acknowledge the dignitaries who are here and then we will discharge you. Mr. Chairman, Nana Ajeni Mbwati is a woman hini and uncle of the nominee. Nana Asari Adu Mensa Amakum hini. Honorable S.K. Buafo, former MP for Subin uh. and Minister for Chief Tenancy, and a former regional minister for Ashanti as well, Dr. Edward.